Today we're going to be going over our uh, pendulum exercise, which concentrates on a few more new principles. Mainly, uh, we're going to be dealing with follow-through and overlapping action, and uh, secondary action, or another way of saying it is successive breaking of joints. Now, this is useful for things like tails, hair, cloth, uh, or even an arm that has multiple joints that can be swinging and passive. So far we have dealt with most of our 12 principles of animation. We've dealt with squash and stretch, anticipation, anticipation staging, straight ahead, action and pose to pose, slow ins and slow outs, uh, arcs, timing, exaggeration, and appeals. So let's get started. Uh, first we need our planning. So. This was my planning, a little PDF file. This is our pendulum. Uh, I have him s going, moving from screen right to s screen left to screen right, uh, slowing out, coming in at speed very quickly and hitting a wall. And our then our pendulum continues to follow through at s at the same speed it was moving, and and, t and then swings to basically a rest. So here's our planning. So as you can see, when the main platform stops moving, our pendulum, the other joints, continue to move through and, and swing to rest. Now, each one of these is directly dependent on the one prior to it, meaning this joint is directly dependent on this, on the motion of our platform. This joint is directly dependent on the motion of this joint, and this joint is directly dependent on the motion of the medium joint, the middle joint. Here's our scene, here's where it's going to hit. I'm gonna and first I'm just going to animate one piece at a time. We're going to layer this on. You need to understand uh, how this works before you can actually go ahead and do something like this pose to pose. Uh, posing out is helps when you have a much longer chain than just three, but the way we're going to show you is a, a layering process which will help you understand what it's supposed to look like and how it works so you can move on to uh, doing more complex things. So we've set a key at frame 100 and then we're going to say go about 16 frames and set another key. And at 16 frames I want to move him to impact the wall here. Just going to zoom in so I get a nice little contact. Looks like that. Not very exciting because it slows in. Right now, if you look at our graph, he slows out, speeds up, and slows in. We don't want that. We want a hard impact. We also want him to bounce off as we did in our planning here. He bounces. So I'm going to put in the bounces first. So three frames, let's have them come off. And then at two frames, let's have them come off less. And so just like your ball, a bouncing ball, that, meaning like if this was your apex of your jump, this is the impact where he hits the floor. So just like the ball, we want to break the tangents and go linear. At that point, I'm going to adjust this tangent so he comes in much faster. I'm going to do the same thing for these joints here. I'm going to, or these keys here. I'm going to break the tangents, go linear, and adjust them. Just looks just like a bouncing ball because essentially that's what it is. There we go. Let's bring them in. A little bit faster. There we go. So we got a little bit longer of a hold and comes in faster. So I'm pretty happy with the way that main platform looks. So now that this is done, we're going to move on to our first joint. So, first joint, make sure our key is set. And let's go to where he impacts, which is frame 16. We need to set another key. And at frame 16, he's going to lag behind. He's not going to change direction until 
this first impact, till this first hit, till this platform comes to a stop. It's kind of like a car crash, or if your car stops really, really fast. If you notice, you're sitting in the car seat, and when the car comes to a crash or sudden stop, or someone slams on the brakes, you move forward. You continue moving forward. This is the same principle. Uh, our our pendulum will can will be lagging behind, and then mo continue to move through, move forward through this uh, this arc at the same speed as this pendulum was basically moving. So we need to make it feel like this pendulum moving through is the same speed of the platform coming to to hit. So once we get to there, let's go maybe eight frames. So eight frames, we need to swing it through. How's that feel? Oof. That feels weird, doesn't it? Well, it's because we're slowing in and slowing out at this point. Just like your ball bounce, it's going to change direction drastically. So break your tangents and go in linear and have him come through at speed. There we go. Feels a little soft. better. So now I need to have him swing back the other direction. So let's go 12 frames and swing him back. And as we swing back and forth, it's going to get less and less and less. So even though I only went 8 frames, it's only half a, it's kind of it's kind of half a swing because it's coming at speed here and we need enough time to slow down and to go back the other direction. That's why I'm using more frames on this first one. So if this is at 50, this is going to be 40. I'm looking at this number right here or this number right here. And as we establish our weight in this beginning, once we get this first couple of swings down, it needs to be consistent, it needs to feel consistently the same mass as we move through this animation. So I've gone 12 frames, let's go 11. And set a key, and so that was around 40. Let's go about 34. And let's go 10 frames. So we're just checking it. Feels okay. That first swing through feels a little fast. So let's adjust that. Maybe by two. And then these here are going to feel a little fast. So I'm going to adjust those by one. That's better. So now I'm basically going to continue this pattern all the way down until this one comes to a rest. Always decreasing in time and value as we go.
right, what's that look like? Looks, oh, at the very end, it feels a little abrupt right there. So let's just adjust those keys. There we go. So you're going to use a lot of frames here, but it's just being consistent, keeping it very kind of a even feel all the way through. There we go. So now that we have that one feeling good, we're going to move down to this next one. So frame 100, set a key. I'm going to select the first one again and I want to select the whole curve. Say edit, copy. On this, on this next one I want to select this curve and say edit, paste. So what that effectively does is pastes that same animation onto the next one. Unfortunately they're moving together and just like this one is dependent on the plane platform the second joint is dependent on the first joint. So we want it to lag from the first joint. Well, the easiest way to do that is to select its whole curve except for this first point, and we're going to move it. We're going to offset it by, say, four frames. So, one, two, three, four. So that now this looks like a nice little offset, and it's going to get weird right towards the end, a little bit in here. Not too weird just a little and we're going to adjust that in just a moment. First we want to make sure this beginning part since it's offset by four frames I want to set a key and I want it to just kind of lag a little just a little. So as, as, it, as this is going the wind starts to blow against it and so this one moves before this one. It's subtle, but what you're going to notice it much more as we get to the next joint. So that's our next joint. Well, let's fix these last couple little bounces in here. Or not bounces, I'm sorry. Swings. When it starts to get a little funky. There it is. I'm going to pull this back a little. Maybe that one. So, just like we did this one, this last one's directly dependent on the middle one. Again, selecting the whole curve, edit, copy, let's do it again, select the next joint down, set a key, make sure you select your curve until you edit, paste, and again, we're almost there. But we want this to be offset again from this one. Let's take the whole curve except for the very first frame and offset it by four frames. Two, three, four. And now we want this nice cool like little arcing thing to happen. As the wind blows here, it's just like a flag. It's gonna affect here first and arc down. go. So I'm 
want to exaggerate this last joint the most because if you're using a bull whip or if you're on a roller coaster or, or any sort of successive chain of events, the last one is is going to be faster and more violent than the first one. So we need to exaggerate this last one, especially here. At frame 16, I'm going to insert my key, and we want this to be much more exaggerated. So I'm going to take all of these guys here, and I'm, I'm just going to scale them. There we go. Again, right through this beginning portion is where we want to kind of adjust things. As you know, if I select all these joints, you get a pattern that emerges. <laughs> it's kind of the pattern we're looking for in this sort of thing. But this first hit, honestly, I think it's taking too long. So I'm going to adjust it back by a couple frames. Whoops. You get a frame faster. This one gets a frame faster, and so does this one. we go. Almost done. Again, got to go to this last few and adjust our curves. go. One more just and I think we've got it. There we go. So as you can see, successive breaking of joints all the way down the chain coming to rest. Keeping it very consistent, very even over the course of the animation, adjusting it ever so slightly where you need to. If I select all of these again, you'll notice a nice little pattern that emerges. And this bigger one right here is actually our last joint. You can actually do that with the middle joint as well if you want to exaggerate that one. So I could take all these guys. And I want to exaggerate him. 
just a little bit, but not any more than the last one. So we get this nice little even effect. If we watch that, it's even a bigger swing through now. Just that slight little change. And that is how you animate a pendulum. I'll see you guys in class.